turn it over now to Paul Morrow. He's an attorney and former NYPD inspector. So, Paul, legally, I guess if maybe you're a good Samaritan, right. I don't think he's a vigilante because he didn't go, kind of go after this guy. If you're trying to restrain someone who many believe uh, he was putting their lives, their safety at risk, is he going to face charges? So there's a lot of context here. Um, first of all, if he does face charges, it's not going to be an intentional murder charge. It's either going to be something based on his being reckless or negligent, okay? But either way, those are charges you don't want to face because they're homicide charges. They're a sidestep from murder. But let's remember the context. You know, we've had a rash of stuff in the subways where we've had people who are also mentally ill pushing women in front of trains, doing all kinds of stuff. And you heard some of the verbiage from Mr. Neely from that witness who says things like, I'm done, I don't care if I die, et cetera. Those are signals to people who were trapped in that car. Mm -hmm. This is going really bad. And that plays into what the defense would be for this Marine. His defense is going to be something called justification. And it's pretty simple. It's pretty much what it sounds like. I had to take the actions that I did, however risky, to mitigate a commensurate risk. In other words, what I did was justified because of the risk that this guy posed. Now, we don't have video of, the, of what he said, so we don't know what risk he posed, but we do know this. He had an open felony assault warrant. Jesse, in this town, nobody wants to charge felony assault, least of all Alvin Bragg. If you look into why he has that open warrant, he broke the orbital bone and the nose of a 67-year-old woman in the subway. Wow. So he's no stranger to danger. And so you add some of these facts up and you start to say to yourself, you know, if I were in that car, maybe I would have done the same thing. Yeah. And the narrative that he held, there's this meme going around that he held onto the chokehold for 15 minutes. No, it's about three minutes. I have it on my website, obsess.org. The full video is there. It's about three minutes. And what's <clears throat> interesting is that at about the three and a half minute mark, he's still moving. You see him take a deep breath. This is after they've let him go. So I want to know, there's an autopsy? Has a toxicology test been done? Is there a pre-existing uh, condition like we have with Eric Garner, who was not charged, who also died allegedly from a chokehold? There are a lot of complexities here. Yeah. And for our political class to act so childishly, only for the, all the racial arsonists in this town are topping off their gas cans. And it's a disgrace to see. Yeah, they're trying to distract from their own failures. And we are just terribly sorry this had to happen. And we hope the DA does a, a legit investigation. We do hope so. I mean, he's going to put it into the grand jury. That's his cover. But this grand jury presentation and this grand jury presentation, he can nuance it. Let's see what Bragg does Let's here. see what he does. All right. Thanks very much, Paul. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.